Mahomes looks over the middle. Oh, intercepted. Steve Edmund, touchdown, Texas. Smith looked right now being chased and sacked. This time swollen, swarmed and sacked. Going deep, intercepted. Kenny Vaccaro. Pass intercepted. Picked off by Quandre Diggs. Mondays can be hard on all of us. One of the reasons we like Mondays here at LHN, we get Manny Diaz in the fall. And the coach joins us right now. Coach, you had a little bit of an off week, but we did hear that you had the defense watch every missed tackle. What was that like for them? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a good story. Uh, we've, um, we took the whole off week, and we sort of watched everything that we've done from the first uh, three games and uh, what we liked, what we didn't like, and what we have to do better and what we don't have to do better. And, and our guys understand the fundamentals of playing this game and, and how we have to play it better. So uh, we had a good week. I, our guys really worked on getting better, and I, th I think we're happy with where we're at. In results of watching that, what was the benefit for the defense? Well, they just understand what a fine line it is between a really good performance and an and average performance. And, and that, I think, is, a, is the key is that there's a lot of really, really good stuff on our tape right now. And if we can just do a couple things to fix the things that we don't really like, then we could really put together the type of game that we think we're capable of. And, and it's, not a, it's not very far away from us. So I think the guys are excited about the corrections that they've made. you got to test this Saturday with Oklahoma State. I mean, the Cowboys they end up losing two first-round picks on offense and Brandon Whedon and also Justin Blackman. How much have the Cowboys missed those two guys? Well, not, not according to the stats. Right. I mean, and they are putting up still video game numbers. And uh, their balance right now is remarkable, what they're doing, running the ball and throwing the football. I don't know if there's anybody in the country – that would lose a starting quarterback and set the record for school offense the day they lost a starting quarterback like they did. So that's a testament to their coaching, their system, and then the players that they have around the quarterback. It's, it's not just a one-man show. They've got, uh, they've got multiple backs. They've got two backs that combined for 200 yards when they came here and played us last year. And uh, if we don't stop them, then we're in major trouble. Then, then after that, the play-action pass game opens up. and. They, 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 they can hurt you in a lot of different ways, or they have our guys' full attention. You mentioned video games. I know co-offensive coordinator Major Applewhite loves playing those because he's an offensive guy. Is it frustrating as a defensive coordinator? Do you just not play the video games because of that? Well, Major plays Super Mario Brothers, which is a little <laughs> strange. Um, I, didn't, I didn't say which one, but yeah. he does play that. Um, well, it, well, we're in a world where you watch some of the quarterbacks that, that we have to play against, and they almost have accuracy that you would see right. on, on a video game. But, but um, some of our guys actually do play a bunch of games. I always encourage them to play that type of stuff. The more you can think this game, the better off yeah. you are. Well, one of the things you see in video games, you see fast-paced offense. Oklahoma State brings that to the table. Why does that make that so difficult on a defense? Well, when you watch what's scarier, that you look at their yards, you look at their points that they're scoring, but you look at the reps, the at-bats, the snaps that they're getting. And... Uh, you can be a really good defensive player. It's hard to be a really good defensive player for 75, 85, 95 plays. You're just going to get worn out. So this is a test. Another great example of why we had a, of what we were able to get accomplished in the bye week is that it's not just testing our first 11. It's testing our second 11. And we've got to have 22 guys that we can roll through this game. Otherwise, we're, we're, we're going to wear down. We won't survive it. You see two quarterbacks, Wes Lunt, who may play, may not play. He's got the knee injury. Also, J.W. Walsh. What do these two guys bring to the table that make them tough to stop? Well, again, they're both, they're both young, but they both have done a good job in terms of what they're trying to get accomplished in their system. Um, obviously, when Walsh came in, he's a little bit more of a, of a runner. You know, he's a fast guy, so he uh, can beat you on, on quarterback run game, but also you can get everybody covered. And, and their passing game puts stress on your coverage. I mean, you've got to be all over the place to cover them when, when they spread you out. Then you do that, you have no one covering the quarterback. So now that puts the stress on your pass rush that you just can't run by the quarterback. There's some things, because if you open up a uh, scene for him, he'll just take off and run, and he can break off 30, 40-yard runs on scrambles, which is the same as completing a 40-yard pass. Yeah. Well, what's When you look at it, obviously, they pre present a lot of challenges. What's the number one challenge they present a defense? Well, in terms of their balance, you know, in terms of the fact that they can run the ball and throw the ball right now when they want to. And so what you have to do defensively is you have to find something what they do best, what they, is the easiest to accomplish, you got to try and take that away. And that's going to be a challenge. That's easier said than done. They, they really, really are doing a good job right now running the football. They know what they're doing. You can see that their line and their backs are well drilled. Their receivers are blocking like crazy down the field. So um, yeah, it's really hard to stop a team if they can do both. You have to find a way to stop one thing or the other and then try and, and, try and rally to the other thing. They're the only BCS team who hasn't given up a sack yet this year. Even in the loss to Arizona, they did not give up a sack. Why are they so hard to get to the quarterback? Well, again, I, I think that's part of the structure of the offense. Their quarterbacks take deep drops. Their offensive line does a good job of pass setting. Their protections are sound. 
Uh, we will not necessarily always define our, our success on whether we are sacking him as much as how we are affecting him. Mm -hmm. We have got to affect the quarterback. We have to make him make poor decisions, and you can do that by sacking him. Um, they threw a pick six against Arizona that they wish they would have been a sack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So as long as Absolutely. we're affecting the quarterback, then, then we'll be successful. And we've seen your defense be able to utilize that, not get sacks, especially last year, but still right. be very effective and cause turnovers. That's exactly right. All right, well, let's take a look at one of the young linebackers because Jordan Hicks may or may not play. We don't know. Tevin Jackson is a guy who's been getting some reps backing him up. Where is Jackson right now in his development as a linebacker? Well, the, the thing that's most exciting to me is that in year two on our campus, he is one of our top special teams performers. We, we have a, a point system for those guys that are on there, and, and on Sunday we call everybody out. Tevin is a name that's always one of the first ones called out. He's one of our highest point getters right now. He is already, in, if we're at the sort of the quarter pole of our season, he's already uh, one of the potential leaders to be our special teams player of the year. That's what you want because ideally – it's easier, it should be easier to learn how to run down on kickoff, protect a punt, run down a punt, than it is to handle all the things in defense. So what you do is you earn your trust because you, find, you show everybody that you can handle those jobs and then just play football, be able to tackle in space to do the things that you have to do on kick game, and then you integrate yourself in the defense. And he's done a really nice job with that. I've really been excited to see Tevin uh, develop as a football player. Uh, when we take a look at, at the secondary, are you happy with what the secondary was able to accomplish in the off week? I am. I am. You know, those guys, we have a prideful group of defensive backs, and, and they take the personality of their coach, Coach Aquina, because he does such a great job leading those guys. And they know they've put a lot of really good plays on tape, and they put a few plays on tape that they're not as proud of and they, that they feel like is not up to their standard, which, which we all have. Um, but they still made the plays that win football games, and I think that, that can't be understated. You know, when you, when you almost catch the interception, usually you almost win that game. And right now, when the ball has been put in danger, they are not almost catching it. They are absolutely catching it. And when you catch it, you don't have to catch very many of them. You're going to win a football game. We've got a lot of data that shows that we can force two or more turnovers. We're probably going to win the football game. So I like the way that we're being aggressive. I like the way we're hawking the ball in the secondary. If we just, uh, again, like everybody else, keep working on our fundamentals, keep correcting our mistakes, I think we're going to be who we expect them to be. Well, you had a rare off week. I know you had to play part of dad and you're at soccer games and also baseball games, but it, I'm sure you caught a little bit of football. Was there one thing that stood out from watching football this weekend? Well, you know, I, I almost sprained my thumb on the remote <laughs> control. There were some good games there. I had the same problem. Yeah, uh, but I haven't lost it. Just yeah, just okay, wondering. Good, I, good. I can still flip channels with the best of them, but <laughs> Um, I think what you see week in, week out is that, you know, in college ball, as much as we try to predict it, you never really know early on how good anybody is yeah. at this stage. Uh, and then even the results you saw over the weekend, you still don't really know what that means. We always love to draw conclusions based off the early returns and in the polling. But we still, there's a long way to go because you can see teams look really good one week and then the next week you kind of wonder what's happening. And that's why the best teams don't worry about any of that stuff. They just worry about improving. If we just get better week in, week out and worry about Texas, then for us, everything will take care of itself at the end. It's kind of like a progress report. And as you know from school, those can change from week to week. Exactly right. Let's say if they take a picture. If you took a picture of yourself week in, week out, right. you, might have, you might look different, you might have dressed differently. It's not you, though. That was you on that day. Right. You're going to be somebody different seven days later. Well, Coach, every day on Monday we get you here. We appreciate that. Thanks for the time. My pleasure.